one thing a fabulous director once told me is uh, that the word melos means melody and limb. And to me, that, so in the Greek language, it's one and the same thing. You know, this is as much a melody as something sonic. And I think that people experience music in all kinds of ways, obviously, but that, that thing of the physicality connected to the sound that arises. One of the great things about playing the cello is that you can, you can be there and you can see who's there. There is no fourth wall as a cellist. Well, there never is for anything, really. I've never, I don't know about you, I've never found that fourth wall. Physicality and stagecraft and singing all in the same package. I, I really feel and believe and have seen to be true, I would say, that those things can't be disconnected. Singing crept up on me, courtesy a bit of my um, cello teacher who kept on giving me tapes of Russian baritones and things like that. But in a, in a way, maybe I wasn't really in a place to, to do that. I wasn't quite ready or I didn't feel the urge to do that earlier in my life. In my 20s, I was, I was working a lot with composers and John Taverner found out that I, was, I could sing as well as play the cello. He wrote a couple of pieces for me and this singing thing started to come back into my life, having been very present when I was younger. The gigs became more and more uh, <laughs> sort of prestigious, I suppose, with John Tavner involved, and it reached a point where I was cast as Papageno Opera North, and that was when I realised I'd better get my formal act together. So I started having lessons with a wonderful Swedish woman at that point. So it was a bit topsy-turvy. But I suppose that's balanced by the fact that I'd made and... Uh, taken part in more theatre than you could shake a stick at by that point as well. So I had that side of the cocktail of what it is to be an opera singer was relatively, you know, highly evolved. I find a lot of my vocal challenges are solved by understanding the drama better, for instance, or rooting something about the story or the relationship or the proposition of a moment of a scene more deeply in my body then that often solves a vocal issue, and, and vice versa as well. There are moments when suddenly a really forensic vocal approach unlocks the, you know, the, the thing about the scene or the trajectory that I haven't been getting. Yeah, I see it kind of hand in hand in that way and, and quite hard to unpack. And in fact, I, I suppose I believe that they should never be unpacked. <laughs> you know, the, the connoisseur opera goer will no doubt have a kind of vocal-centric view of things, but there are lots of people out there who wouldn't know a Placido Domingo from, a, from an anyone else necessarily. And, and there's something else that they're attuning themselves to perhaps, or that's turning them on or really important. And, and if that bit, whatever it is, the physicality, the stagecraft, simply laying it on the line, whatever it takes that night, if that isn't being looked after, then you know, maybe they're not going to find the experience as fulfilling as it it might be. So it's that thing of, you know, the, if you look after the process, the success of the outcome is guaranteed. You just don't know what it is. And it may not be a successful thing in terms of the very often very narrow point of view of, a, of an opera critic, for instance. But then that's uh, opera is bigger than an opera house.